The SEC and the Big Ten just want to do their own thing. Like four automatic qualifiers for each conference makes no sense. This is Locked On Big 12. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Big 12. I'm Drake Toll from ESPN Central Texas. Thanks for making Locked On Big 12 your first listen every single day. Look, the SEC, there, there are murmurs. The SEC and the Big 10 want to create four automatic bids to the college football playoff or in a 14-team college football playoff. And they're the ones that want the say, and they want the money. They want the revenue share. And at the end of the day, what all this means is we are, as we know, hurling toward an era where there's a, a split, a rift that isn't isn't some doomsday scenario that all of us talking heads are just bringing up. We are looking at a major change in college football. JT Wistrasil of Locked On Utes joins today to ask questions from the school perspective. Where do we go from here? Let's take it away. Drake, there's a lot of craziness going on in the world of college football right now, particularly with the SEC and the Big Ten, the two conferences that, of course, are going to drive the future of the sport. And they have quite the crazy proposal that could potentially be on the table here in the near future. Yeah. So this week, JT, the the commissioners, the, the presidents, the board, the whatever you want to call them, because I hear like four different names for, for the college football playoff, all met and decided whether or not they want to do the six plus six format, which is five power, five conference champions and the best conference champion of the group of five plus six at large bids in the CFP. Or if they want to go to a five plus seven, which they ended up doing because they have to because the Pac-12 doesn't exist. It's a power four, four get in plus one conference champion. That's all good and well. But the wild thing that came out of this week is Kirk Schultz, who is the president at Washington State, who could have blocked this and it wouldn't be shocking because Washington State has got the short end of the stick here. He came out and said, yeah, maybe the craziest part of this whole week and all the conversations was it was brought up. It was proposed. It was talked about. There was there was rhetoric from folks saying, what if the A- the SEC and the, the Big Ten took the ACC and the Big 12 and everybody else out of the equation and just had four automatic bids apiece? What if the SEC and the Big Ten in a 12-team college football playoff format or even moving forward to 14-team play- playoff format had four teams automatically in a piece? And JT, we, we talk all the time, almost hyperbolically about the death of modern college athletics or or the the resurgence of the the surgence of a new era that will kill traditional college athletics. And I, I don't think it's hyperbolic at this point. We're talking about two conferences where greed and money run rampant. And as crazy as this might sound, it's legitimate. These two leagues want to create their own realm in the college game. They absolutely do. They would love to have four keys, which is just, I mean, as someone who loves conference championship weekend, like just the amount that would do to like, who would care about a big 10 or sec championship when everyone gets into the playoff? Like that's where I think it would just be, it would just be really disappointing if that was the case and just continuing to try to force the other teams out. And look, I understand that the sec and the Big Ten continue to be the powerhouses in college football. But there's a reason that Clemson was what they were a few years ago. Let's not forget Washington. Uh, I guess Washington's now in the Big Big Ten, so that's where, unfortunately, that hurt my yeah. heart. But, yeah, there are other, but there are yeah. other schools, just teams, programs, where you're in and you're out. Like, it's fun having the parity and seeing the other teams and the and the groups come in as well. And well, I think, uh, I think, you know, JT, I would, let me yeah. give you, you know, you use Washington here. I think Utah is a good example of a squad mm-hmm. that won back-to-back Pac-12 championships. And under the format, they were would have gotten into the, into the college football playoff under a 12 team format. And after that, you look at other quality pack 12 teams, like at the time and Oregon, they, mm-hmm. they effectively couldn't get in right. That, that that's, that wouldn't be, there wouldn't be an avenue for that for multiple teams that are deserved. Now does the addition of Oregon or Washington, USC and UCLA to the big 10 or Texas, Oklahoma to the sec cut out the fat. I don't think so because the schools like Utah still exist. What if Kansas state does win the big 12 championship, but Utah still finishes at 11 and two or 12 and yeah. one. Utah deserves to be a college football Absolutely. playoff team. We can't remove parity from a sport that's had so much of it. You, you can't. And especially, yes, like you said, if we did that kind of uh, like debate JT, thing. JT, hold on. I'm going to pause you again. I'm going to pause you again. Because yeah. somebody out there, somebody out there, okay. 
is screaming and throwing things across the room right now. Parity. There ain't been no parity because they're thinking about the Alabamas and now the Georgia, who wasn't great when the college football playoff started, how these teams have gotten a foothold in college athletics. But I ask you, what about what about Washington? What about yeah. Cincinnati? What about those teams that have made the college football playoff that didn't exactly make sense or the squads that have still done it? Like we at the very top of this game still have teams year in and year out TCU that do things that are unexpected. I don't think we can forget that when we start talking about multiple automatic qualifiers for just two conferences. TCU beat Michigan just last year, and I yeah. know they got destroyed yeah. in the championship game, but that has to be brought up that they still beat him there. And I know everyone – I hear so many people, Drake, talk about like, oh, I don't know if that Michigan would have beat Georgia and all these things. Well, I know this. Michigan beat Washington. Washington beat Texas. Yeah. Texas beat – Alabama earlier in the season. Alabama beat Georgia. Therefore, we've seen that these teams can yeah. beat one another if you go down the rabbit hole like that. Yeah, yes, matchups, different things, all that matter. But Georgia wasn't invincible or else they would have been in the Final Four because they would have yeah. taken care of business. And they didn't do that. And that's why you still have to have this parity. You have to give teams this opportunity to get in there and compete. Because same thing with the TCU and all of these other teams out there that deserve a shot. They deserve an opportunity when they still survived a Power Four schedule. It's not easy to go in and win in tough road games all these things of that nature like if utah is so unworthy and a lot of these other teams would be so unworthy i want to see this sec team or whoever it is that is so much better than utah that they deserve the spot over them so much more well utah in this scenario the format that's now listed at they will have the opportunity to prove how much better they are because they would have to go into rice eccles stadium and if you can win at rice eccles stadium which i know they lost this last year to oregon but it was still without Cam Rising. So it was out there starting quarterback. This is a yeah. Utah team that went at full health, hasn't lost since 2018. That has to matter in things like this about how difficult it is to go in and win on the road. And I still feel like Utah and all these other teams deserve the opportunity to host these games for the strong regular seasons they have. I, 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 you've hit the nail on the head here. And that applies to, if you're looking from a conference standpoint, to a Kansas State, to an Iowa State, to a West Virginia, to anybody in this league, you deserve, based on the quality of work that you put in, the body of work that you put in in a regular season, a shot at, at the playoff, even if you don't win a conference championship. For a Utah, if Utah doesn't win the Big 12 championship, and they go 12 and one, they should still be in the college football yeah. playoff. The big 12 should still have a window to get three great teams in. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, this next season, Kansas state goes 12 and one wins a big 12 championship. Utah goes 11 and two and gets right there. Kansas goes, mm, we'll say we'll give Kansas an 11 and one record. And by proxy, one of those teams loses in the big 12 championship. You know, like, we, we connect those dots every year as we get into the playoff conversations. Those three teams are, are still at the top of college football and probably deserve to compete with an Ole Miss who's right there or a Missouri who's right there. I just, I, I can't wrap my brain around the fact that we're going to monopolize this to the point where only this team gets to go effectively every year. And uh, an 11 and one Kansas or a, an 11 and two Utah just has to sit it out. We'll never know whether or not they could have won at all. At the reality I don't want to live in, but unfortunately, it's something that could be happening is we are going to talk about how even crazier the world of college football could continue to shake up in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you about one of the sponsors of our crossover episode today between Locked On Utes and Locked On Big 12. It's our friends at Ibotta. Grocery bills are so expensive these days, but now they don't have to be. You can start getting cash back on your grocery shopping with free with the free Ibotta app and get cash back every time you shop. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That can cover the cost of an entire shopping trip so you can buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you're dying to go to, or the fancy dinner you've been craving. So 
you can join the over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using code Locked On College. That's one word, no spaces, Locked On College when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use that code Locked On College in all caps. That's Ibotta in the Google Play or Apple Store and use the code Locked On College. Drake, we were talking about what a wild world college football is right now in the Big Ten and SEC trying to make moves that could potentially allow the, them to take full control of the sport and the playoff landscape. Yeah. And, you know, Utah and a lot of these other schools, they might have to resort to drastic actions, Drake, in order to avoid it. Why sit around and wait for the SEC and the Big Ten and honestly the NCAA president Charlie Baker to create this ultimate league of the the super teams in college football? Charlie Baker's whole deal the last six months has been what if we take the schools that could afford to pay their student athletes $30,000 a piece for at least half of those athletes and give them their own league where they create their own rules. It's a it's a very vague attempt for the NCAA to still try to have some power here and it doesn't sound like the Big Ten, the SEC, or even a Florida State, some of these major brands, are very happy with the NCAA. Shocking, I know. In that, we've heard all these talks about how those conferences, those teams might break away and try to do their own thing, leave the NCAA. What if the the ACC, the Big 12, the teams that are considered the leftovers are, are at the forefront of this, or at least progressive in the future of college athletics? Here's what I mean. Right now, I'm talking about UNC and Virginia being two teams that are pretty good players in expansion because their TV markets make sense for the SEC. But the rumors we keep hearing are Virginia Tech and NC State who are considered or Virginia Tech and NC State who are considered the little brothers are the ones who are actually pioneering yeah. going to the Big 12 or pioneering going to another conference. What if those are the schools that make the decision and say, hey, I want to go X, Y, Z. And then the actual government of Virginia says, well, we got to keep you with UVA. Why, why don't you guys go together? Right. That's going to complicate things. It is for it is Virginia Tech laying it all on the table and saying, look, we will not be we we will not be truffled with to quote michael scott and if you're the big 12 if you're the acc there comes a point where you say look we're not going to live on the whim of the big 10 and the sec who don't want us to be here at what point do we actually separate and this becomes a, a, a league of its own where you guys get to play michigan ohio state every other weekend and get your viewership and the Big 12, the ACC, can actually have the product that people will watch because the parity still exists. We are undervaluing parity in college athletics right now, and I think that's going to be the death of what we know as the fun, the pomp, the circumstance that is college football. You're right. I mean, it's nice to know like each season, like, I mean, before this season, we were talking about Utah having a shot to make the college football playoff. I know I was. And yes, the, when can, we found out about Cam Rising and even this, yeah. with how good the Pac-12 this year, I didn't feel like Utah was going to make it, but I felt like there was at least a chance. Like that's what makes it fun is like your school has a chance to win it all. The surprise, the shock, like I knew Michigan, a lot of people thought Michigan would be good this year, but even they're another example. And yes, I know they're in the big 10 machine now of, and I have been, but like they weren't expected to win at all. Like the parody is what we talked about. Like just the story of what they represent of, you know, they're not Georgia, they're not Alabama and boom, now they want to national. Like there's other teams at TCU making it. There is such a win as we talked about, like that's what makes this fun as well. And you know, if the top dogs want to shut it off and not allow for that, I think that's where it would be really disappointing. And that's where mm -hmm. I, I would want these schools to separate and, and be able to keep alive this sport that we love to cover so much because there's so much about it that is changing so rapidly drake i there's part of this to me too where it's it's appalling how how women's basketball has been treated by the national media in the college game, especially you, they yeah. don't get the attention until the last couple of years that they've they've truly deserved yeah. they are treated as year, second yeah. rate and and to be honest with you, JT, looking at the last even even two seasons, there has been more and more focus on women's basketball, more ESPN picking up their March Madness games. And people care about Caitlin Clark. People care about this product that was for so long considered second rate. 
when these big TV companies decide what's first rate, what's second rate viewing, they don't always get it right. They're going to tell you that Michigan, Ohio State is this first rate viewing and that BYU and Utah will never be first rate to that extent. I think when we get to the point where Fox buys out the SEC, the Big Ten, and says, look, create your Super League. We'll have the rights to it. Here's a billion dollars. That sounds crazy, but it's legitimately what's on the table in a lot of these conversations. Here is a blank check. Go do your own thing. In that in that world where ESPN picks up the ACC and the Big 12, I still think when top 10 Utah plays top 15 BYU, you're going to see eyeballs on this. we We'll consider this a second tier product like we considered women's basketball in college in the college game, a second tier product. And then the day that a star shows up for Utah, the way that a Caitlin Clark has, you think, wait a second, this is a whole lot better than we actually considered it to be. And and then the eggs on whose face? I just again, I believe when when we as the Big 12, the expansion Big 12, get ahead of the game here, it's only going to put us in a better spot. Don't just try to ride the coattails of the SEC and the Big 10, hoping there can be a power three one day. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel like that's the world we're going to come into like that. I mean, when people say super conferences in general, they usually do only refer to the two being the SEC yeah, and the yeah. Big Ten as well. And that's where you see the Big 12 already making moves, right? Some of the scheduling things where they've tried to avoid some of the SEC and the Big Ten's bigger matchups, rivalry weekend, things of that nature, where they're trying to like place a Utah BYU in early November, maybe to try and give that rivalry a little bit of a spotlight. But then even then, I think it's Alabama LSU that weekend. So it's hard mm-hmm. to, to get out of the way of some of those things too. But you're right. It definitely does feel like that's what we're trending towards. And it just, it is such a bummer that in the national, we see this in national media at times too. Like I just remember people, even when Utah back in 2019 was really good that year and they were vying for a college football playoff spot all year long and everyone was like well how good is utah really and all this and that and utah was really good that year like yeah they lost to justin herbert's oregon in in the big 12 in the excuse me the pac 12 championship game at the time and it's just it's one of those things where that team was 11 and one going into that game for a reason they were really good and they just look this isn't an and that wasn't an alabama or a florida state instance excuse me where like the star quarterback gets hurt now we got to reevaluate everything like everyone was still there and healthy like when you put together that resume and your complete team is still there you deserve an opportunity to prove that as for the third and final time i will bring up what tcu did to michigan back just last year's playoff yep yep and the michigan wins a national championship you know like (laughs) TCU didn't beat a slouch here, you know, and, and yeah. I, I understand that the loss to Georgia is something people will bring up constantly. But look at the, I mean, you look at the one team, the dominant team in college for those two years was Georgia, right? They, they were the anomaly. It was like, oh, well, it's Georgia. They're just, they're mowing through everybody, especially that season. And we have seen those juggernauts and superpowers in college football. Not to say that TCU could ever have held the Bulldogs jockstrap, but they beat Michigan. You know, I mean, yeah. there is there is still an avenue for Utah to beat Ohio State in the college football playoff. And what we are hearing is people thinking that's impossible. I don't think it's impossible that, that a Kansas state could ever beat a Penn state in the college football playoff. Uh, and I just, I, there, there's, there is no way, again, there's no way to truly understand how undervalued parity is until we get five years down the line and everything's ruined. And we look back and say, I miss when Kansas state played Missouri in the non-conference. Those were fun games. I 1000% agree. It's something that definitely feels like, especially non-conference games where uh, we're getting away from non-conference games in in terms of the big ramifications of them, the big Mm -hmm. ones. But one thing that is not going away is expansion and want to talk about an aspect of big 12 expansion with all of you in one moment. But first want to talk to you about one of the sponsors of today's crossover in our great friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. This is FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sports partner of the NBA. And the NBA is back from the all-star break. Steph Curry is going to be getting back at it. Can the Warriors make a playoff run to get out of the play-in realm? And if they, are they going to be able to do that? What are we going to see from the likes of Eastern Conference contenders? So many fun trades, so much great action going on across the association. And you can bet on all of it now at FanDuel Sportsbook. 
Drake expansion is something that is not going away and and very curious to see as it pertains to the big 12 right now, you could get some potential things that relate to expansion that could lead to a whole lot more changes. We are, man, we're, we're just not far away from the ACC suffering a similar fate to the PAC 12. And the reason like that I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that is because of court documents that we've seen recently. And as a court documents, that is the ACC's lawyers have presented this case against Florida state or against, or, or trying to defend the, the grant of rights against what Florida state has claimed. And the one thing that I picked out of there is the admission a settlement is possible. There's a number that Florida State can pose here or the ACC can agree on that that creates a separation between those two. And and in that, it sets a number for everybody else. If you say, hey, $150 million gets you out of the ACC, we'll settle with you. Once they do it at Florida State, they're going to have to do it with Clemson or Miami or UNC or Virginia, whoever. And so there's no way. Florida State, to me, could win this. They could win the case outright, almost walk out scot-free. They'll likely pay via settlement, but with that, NC State or Miami or Clemson, I mean, people, they'll say you're insane for believing that Clemson and the Big 12 is a possibility, but Big 12 is, Clemson is being undervalued by conferences that aren't the Big 12. And the reason why is 15 years ago, we didn't talk about Clemson. We didn't know what they were. We didn't care about Clemson. They got the brand they have via winning. If Utah, the next 15 years, 10 years even, wins two national championships, they'll be what Clemson is today. Right? That, that's what they won to create what they are because no one cared. If the next five years of Clemson football are bad, no one one's going to care again. They're just going to go away. They don't have the staying power like Florida State or Texas or Oklahoma. That being said, JT, if you're looking at a Clemson, that's the dream scenario. Or even an NC State or Virginia Tech, a Pitt, a Louisville, those seem more reasonable. What do you do as a Utah fan, as a BYU fan, as a Colorado fan, as an Arizona? Like, what do you do as a team out West when we're talking such far eastward expansion in the Big 12? I think to me, with the brands that you've mentioned, I get excited about that because mm -hmm. I know as it pertains to Utah and winning, a win over Clemson is massive. A win over Miami would be incredible. All of those things because major beating major brands is really good for your own brand because if you're proving that year that right now you're a better team and a better program. If you look at recent winning, Utah is a top 15 program over like the last five years in college yeah. football. Yeah. I don't think many people would give them the credit that they deserve for that because they haven't played some of the Clemsons in that. And yes, they've played some good Pac-12 teams. They've beaten them. They've won the conference in some decent years, I might even add as well, where there were some good teams and they've still beaten it. But because people didn't care as much about the Pac-12, those wins didn't matter as much. But what if you're beaten up on Miami and everyone's like, Again, outraged because Miami's losing to Utah. And it's right. That's right. Miami's using to Utah because yeah. Utah's been a better program than Miami. And this is where we remind you this is exactly what happened with Florida this a couple of years ago when Utah took on Florida. Florida beat Utah. Utah lost in the final play of the game in Gainesville. And everyone was like, ah, SCC this, SCC that. Well, it's really hard to do a cross country road game. Just ask the Gators how it worked out when they went up to Salt yeah. Lake City this last fall. It did not go very well for them. And that's what these kind of environments would be able to showcase. It's like, oh, our team's Clemson, like traveling out to Utah. That'd be a really hard game for them. Be a tough game for Utah to go and play at Death Valley, too. All of these new brands, new rivalries, everything like that. Conference realignment is already underway. It's time to embrace it. And I think adding brands that big would only boost Utah and the Big 12 in that instance. Yeah, I think you, you not only embrace it, you get out of the front of it. And and Brett Yormark's going to do that. He has shown that That's he wants done. to be. <laughs> yep, 100%. He is not going to sit by. And the George Klievkov quote of, we haven't decided if we're going to go shopping there yet. You know, and, and now he's separated with the Pac-12. And, and they didn't obviously pick up any Big 12 teams and said the, the opposite happened. My, my old thing is... Brett Yormark will do the exact same with the ACC when that day comes, when all, all it takes is four teams leaving that conference, four teams for their TV deal to be reworked. And at that point, things really, really go haywire. And I'm not so positive that a Clemson, a Miami, even an NC State, as we've heard, will have to have a landing spot set in stone for them to leave. You'll hear other analysts say, oh, well, they have to know where they're going to go for them to do it. No, I, I think these teams are going to show, hey, we have the money to do it. We have the cojones to, to do it. We will leave the ACC and search elsewhere, even if it's not the SEC and the Big Ten. And to me, that leads straight to the Big 12. I, I'm This conference... 
it blows my mind, JT. It blows my mind. As somebody who's covered this league for five years, this conference went from, oh, Texas and oh, you are leaving. It will die to, huh, what if Clemson is a brand that gets left behind by the SEC and Big Ten and falls to the Big 12, much to the benefit of this conference? It would be so, just speaking out loud, it would be insane if the SEC, if the SEC and the Big Ten had the chance to add Clemson and they passed on it. But the way the way people were talking about Dabo Sweeney when the Alabama job popped up, I'm like, my gosh, I didn't know it was this possible to disrespect someone who's won two national championships. Why is Brian Kelly getting more love than Dabo Sweeney? Like when some of these things, I just... I know it's about what if we live in a world of what have you done for me lately? Hence why you brought up uh, George Klyovkov at one point thinking he was going to be able to go shopping at some point. He can't even get into the dang store to go shopping at this point anymore. His access has been denied, revoked. He was shown the boot in the door. So it's amazing how quickly things can change in the college athletics world. Utah and the big pill would be just would not be smart, as we said, not to welcome Clemson. I absolutely think they're going to. And one thing's for sure, Drake, the realignment madness, all of this in college football is not slowing down anytime soon. So make sure you guys stay with Locked On Big 12. Drake doing a great job breaking it down, as always. Always fun doing these with you, Drake. Oh, dude, I love it. I love it. I, I think having the perspective of someone who follows a school, who covers a school is good because I this directly, is as much as it sounds like, some it's going to sound like a, a doomsday, doom and gloom. And, oh, there's no way this ever happens. Well, we're seeing it unfold. And to others, it's, ah, will this ever affect me? Like, maybe it happens. Will it affect me? I mean, look, if, if you love a school, which you're all here because you do, it is going to impact you in a way that's much larger than many of us actually, actually think. And keen example, Utah playing TCU in a conference game, you know, like again, by the way, Utah playing Kansas state in a conference game. That is, that is how it impacts you. And it, it, in two years, we'll be saying, Oh wow, Kansas and Clemson. That's a conference. You know, those conversations will be had again. That's not going to go away. And JT, so glad that I could come on the show, give the, the holistic, perspective and get the perspective of you that who has the more detailed school oriented view appreciate it drake always fun doing these and it's always fun interacting with all of you our listeners each and every week that is going to do it for our shows this week but we can't be back wait to be back with you next week talking all things utah and big 12 we look forward to seeing you then have a great weekend everyone